mission to keep parks open and accessible to the public so that people have places for free speech on public property. Uh, this is not come easy uh, during a time when so many people, so many park employees are still at home. Uh, the maintenance impacts have been huge and noticeable. Uh, for example, we've had to deprioritize other essential park maintenance work to support the protest and uh, to clean up afterwards as well. Uh, one of the only places people have been allowed to go to during the lockdown has been uh, our public parks. Uh, the maintenance impacts resulting from the intensity of use uh, has created a condition that we're struggling to keep up with. However, supporting free speech seems very important right now, as is having public parks that are usable to the public. So that's sort of uh, kind of the state that we've been working in over the last several weeks. Um, next slide, I'd like to talk about the Japanese garden for a minute. Uh, actually, happy birthday to the Japanese garden and thank you to the partners for your partnership and stewardship of the Arboretum uh, all these years, uh, particularly at the Japanese garden. The garden opened to the public on June 5th, 1960. We're celebrating 60 years of uh, Japanese garden. Countless visitors have enjoyed tranquility and serenity of the garden over the past 60 years. The garden highlights the legacy of shared stewardship, partnership, and friendship between the university, the, the foundation, and Seattle Parks. The Japanese garden is a special place not only for its tranquility and its nearly mythical eat-on-command koi. Those koi are pretty special at the Japanese garden. Uh, but not only because of the koi and the tranquility, because the Japanese garden is also a rich example of the partnership, special partnership between the foundation, the university, and the city. Uh, this partnership works because the partners are allowed to work within our mission uh, to make the garden the best place for the public. Um, it's one of the finest Japanese gardens uh, in the United States. Uh, if not the world. Uh, about 18 months ago, uh, we entered into an agreement that gave the foundation greater control over the programming and activation uh, in the garden. But this has worked remarkably well, resulting in significant increases in revenue and new revenue streams. And I, I really wanna give Jane a lot of credit to her and her team uh, for really making this part of the partnership uh, work. I think it's a great example of uh, figuring out what your partners are really good at and letting them do that thing they're really good at. Um, uh, we do maintenance, but we, we're not as good as doing some of the fundraising things and revenue generation that the foundation is. Uh, so figuring out creative ways to increase revenue through activation and programming is one example of something the foundation is really good at, amongst many other things. The university brings a vital education component to the garden as a curator and owner of the plant collection. Again, as a partner, the university is well suited to this role. So thank you to the university as well. The garden has been closed since about mid-March and it's our goal to have the garden open before the end of the month. Uh, we are following social distancing guidelines uh, recommended by the governor, uh, Seattle King County Public Health, for the reopening of all park and public, re pu public recreation facilities and amenities. So um, things will open. Uh, there just may be restrictions on how many people can enter the garden at one time. Uh, I also wanted to provide an update on the Waterfront Loop Trail. Uh, the trail is seeing a lot of use. We're working with the Army Corps of Engineers and park staff on plan establishment and monitoring the wetland planning area. Uh, 